Hello everyone, my name is Vicenzo Charbaro and today we're going to talk about uh, a new feature coming in MariaDB, which is reverse privileges. So before we start, a little bit about myself. I've been a foundation developer since 2013. I've implemented a number of significant features. Uh, the most well known are roles and window functions and uh, this soon to be released reverse privileges feature. So uh, let's get right into it. Now, the first thing that comes to, to mind when uh, discussing about a new feature is uh, how did we get the idea of this feature in the first place? Well, uh, frankly, uh, users have been asking about it for a long time. We even have an MDEV that's been created a long time ago. Um, and we're going to mention it a little bit later. Now, the most common question that you can find related to this topic is people asking, how can I restrict uh, a user uh, to a particular set of tables? Or uh, and another way to phrase it is, how can I grant access to a user to all my tables except a particular set? And if you are to look at uh, how this is, um, how a solution to this is prescribed, uh, it's not pretty. The way you would supposedly do it is you would identify all the tables in your database and grant rights to all of them, except for the ones that you want to skip. And the only way to do this is to generate some SQL with concat, um, grant, do some stuff there, and then finally uh, run all those grants, which in the end works, but this really is not something you want to maintain in your application. At any point, should your schema change, then you have to rerun all of this, recreate it. So not pleasant. You must think there must be a better way given all this, right? Well, in current MariaDB, there isn't really, which is sad, but uh, first let me explain why this is the case. Now, we need to look at MariaDB's privilege system and the way it's set up is it's a tiered privilege system where we have global privileges, database level privileges, table level privileges, columns, and other specialized uh, objects like stored procedures, Oracle packages, and those are recent in MariaDB, and so on. And if we look at the set of privileges, they go from less specific to more specific. Well, where global privileges are the least specific ones, they're like blanket statements over everything. They also cover some spe special rights like show databases or replication slave privileges, uh, file privilege is another one. Now, all of these, um, when you grant them to a user, they take effect uh, over all objects in the database. Then you can go uh, with finer grain control over database level or schema level privileges. And then you can grant uh, on tables and on columns and such. Now, the problem with this is that all of these are additive, which means that if you have something granted at the higher level, then all the lower levels get it. And if you want to restrict something at a lower level, you're out of luck. The only way to make it is that you have to grant access to everything else at that lower level, except that particular resource. And this comes up with problems that for example, what happens when the schema changes? If you add another table, your grant system will not cover that table, uh, which means that you have to update all your users to also gain access to that table, which frankly isn't really maintainable. And there's also another drawback to this, and that is that the more objects there are, the bigger the system tables get. And the bigger the system tables are, the slower privilege checking becomes. Uh, most of the data structures inside MariaDB actually use hash tables for lookups, but there are some um, types of grants that cannot be so, uh, solved using just hash lookups. And these are usernames. If they have wildcard host names, we have a sorted uh, array for users. 
and this array is binary search. But then again, it's not constant time, it's logarithmic in the number of users. Um, and for, and in some cases for wildcard, you have to do a linear search, just, there's just no other way. Um, and this is actually a problem that was uh, solved for, at, at least for the user uh, array in MySQL 8.0, thanks to a contribution from Eric Herman. Uh, the, the point why I'm mentioning this is that it shows that as the um, system gets more and more complex with more and more entities that need to be granted access, the slower things get. And the same holds true for um, a certain subset of other queries like wildcard database names. That again is problematic. Well, uh, with all that said, we need to find a way to fix this. And we need to fix this by having a solution that allows you to block access to certain resources. And of course, we want this to work in a backwards compatible fashion. We want this to be as transparent to the application as possible. It is not a solution to, refact to force refactoring of a database in most cases. And we also need to make sure that this solution is low overhead. Uh, performance is critical for a database system and especially the, the privilege checking part is always on the hot path. So we need to make use of caches as much as possible. And in addition to that, we need to make sure that it plays nice with the current system. It doesn't introduce some special semantics or behaviors and it needs to give more control to the DBA. Uh, basically just like roles uh, uh, enable role-based access control making simplifying database administrator's job, the same should uh, work for the nice. And the first place to look for is, is there a precedent for this? Usually if somebody's tackled this problem before, they may have found a solution that just works and we can uh, use that. Well, SQL Server has one that kind of maps to most of our uh, requirements. Um, SQL Server has a deny syntax and the problem with this syntax, it's if you look at this uh, part of text here, it's a little bit complicated, but overall the uh, understanding the statement itself is not that complicated. It's almost like a grant. However, uh, the behavior for SQL Server is hard to explain, particularly when it comes to undoing denies. Uh, because a grant over the same set of privileges will undo a deny. Also a grant over a bigger set of privileges will also undo a deny. And that means that you don't really have a clear understanding of when a deny will take place. Or uh, it's also rather hard to reason about, is this user always denied this right? Not really, depends on if you ran, ran deny first or grant first. Mm. Not pleasant. Also, uh, MySQL 8.0.16 has introduced a feature called partial revokes. The problem with partial revokes in MySQL is that it only works on the schema level. And on top of that, because they overload the revoke behavior, it needs to have a special mode enabled which allows for partial revokes to take place. Uh, this means that when you enable it, revoke is no longer idempotent. It means that the second revoke command has a different effect than the first one. You can't just rerun it over and over again and get the same result. And what happens is that this, uh, um, let's take an example. If I have a user who has been granted select access on a particular database, if I revoke access to that database, uh, then the grant just disappears. However, if I have partial revokes and I issue the statement one more time, that user will then have a denied database. So we have now flipped a different switch inside our user credentials. And that's potentially problematic because you cannot reason about um, the effect of a script just by reading the script you need to know what's inside the database before you understand the final outcome. And that is one 
strike against this potential implementation. Uh, and it also has a similar drawback to SQL Server's one in that a grant can actu actually disable partial revokes, making it again hard to reason about for a DBA perspective. So with that in mind, how should we do it? Well, we uh, have the following uh, goals in mind. We want to make it easy for users to understand. It has to be easy to reason about it. Um, take into account the script example. You need to be able to read a script and understand what it's going to do, regardless of what's in your database. Also, uh, there is a similar table with a vaguely similar purpose uh, called the host table. Uh, we want ideally to not have to, to deal with that. It's not really well understood or well used. Um, we just prefer to drop it all together. Now, the goal is to be able to explain the solution in one sentence. And one sentence is, for most of these cases, if I say that the deny will trump every other access, you would be probably right. There's just one or two exceptions, and I'm going to get into those. Now, the project itself is not yet into MariaDB. It is under development. I'm working on it, and it's planned for release in 10.9. You can track the progress in MDEV 14443. Um, we have, I've explained the syntax there as well. We're just going to go into details in the slides here a little bit. So we propose a similar syntax uh, to grant revoke and getting inspiration from SQL Server. We're going to allow deny. You're just going to specify a set of privileges on a particular resource, and you're going to grant to deny it to a particular user. And undoing denies, we believe it's very important to make it very clear when a deny gets undone. So we have a special um, syntax for it. We're going to call it revoke deny. And you can think of denies as working in parallel to the current grant revoke pair of commands. They each have their own um, deny command and revoke deny uh, corresponding to grant um, and respectively revoke. Now, how will the new algorithm work? Remember the ad additive privilege um, we discussed before. Now, on top of that, uh, we will keep track if a connection has a deny present. And only if denies are present, we will perform these additional deny checks. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute an effective deny mask for the current query uh, up until the point we are checking currently. So we're going to compute a global deny mask. And then when we're looking at each table in our query, we're going to look at the table's database and append the global deny mask to the current database for that table. And then if there is a de table level deny, we're going to append the mask for that as well. And if at any point the current mask um, conflicts with any of the privileges that the table that we require from that table, we are going to deny access. The same holds the same holds true for columns, just uh, columns we will need to check each column individually. So if at any point the mask uh, conflicts with what we require in order to run the query, we will uh, stop execution. There are some exceptions to this. Uh, for example, show databases or show tables or any of the show commands. If denies will block access to any particular resource that's part of this enumeration, we will just not mention this um, uh, whatever we are enumerating, tables, columns, databases. And it works very similar to how information schema uh, tables work. And actually behind the scenes, show commands use the information schema tables. That's just how it works. Now I mentioned that the implementation needs to be efficient. So what's the performance overhead? It is true, we're going to be doing extra work if the nice are present. But most of the work that we do is going to be fast because we have structured everything as a hash table. So we're going to uh, ideally only have to do hash table lookups, which um, if you're familiar with how their implementation works, they are constant time lookups. Um, 
Now, the, the thing to keep in mind is that we are making use of the NICE uh, as database users in order to simplify the grant schema. And as I've shown before, if we simplify the grant schema, the whole server overall works faster. So even though we might have to do extra work to check the NICE, because the whole privilege system is simpler to define, it should make the whole thing move faster. Uh, now a few details. Now denies will be stored in the user table as some sort of um, JSON-like representation. The whole spec is presented in the MDEV entry if you're interested. Um, but besides that, we're going to have to introduce an extra privilege such that we can define super users that don't take into account denies. And this privilege is going to be called ignore denies. So if you have ignore denies, denies basically do not apply to you. Uh, we're going to have to decide how we show denies to users. This is not yet a fully solved problem. Um, we could just show denies uh, to every user although it might make sense to only show denies to users that have a particular access to system tables, more specifically MySQL user table, or let's say we define a special right to be able to show denies. It's a little bit tricky here because the SQL standard kind of implies that if you don't know about a resource, you shouldn't, or, or if you don't know or have access to a resource, you should not be able to find out about this resource. But if you say um, that you are denied access to credit card number field in a table, then you kind of know that that credit card number field is in the table. So that's not very good. Um, if you have any input here, well, I'm glad to listen to it. Feel free to comment in Jira or talk to me live now. I'm going to be uh, in the chat for FOSDEM. Any questions you might have, feel free to ping me or comment on the task. Also roles uh, will work just like roles do with privileges. They will be merging their denies and also effectively when you activate a role, if that role has some denies, you will get those denies. And again, if you have ignore denies, then none of this will take into effect. Uh, finally, I do want to, to uh, you to keep in mind that work is still in progress. The project is turning out to be a bit more complex than expected, although I am confident we will make it into 10.9 for preview release. And when the preview release happens, I'm very much looking forward to your feedback. Please, this is the time to test and ensure that this feature, which is touching quite a bit of the sensitive parts of the server, remember all of the privilege checking code is on the hot path, uh, testing for this um, will help ensure that we do not publish any potential bugs when the feature does go live. And of course, I wouldn't be able to give this talk if it weren't for the sponsors of the MariaDB Foundation. Um, I'm very happy for them contributing to uh, MariaDB and ensuring that the MariaDB Foundation's uh, mission can be accomplished. So shout out to our sponsors. And again, also, thank you very much for FOSDEM for having me here and giving me the opportunity to have this talk. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me either by email, you can find me on moridb.org or right now in chat. I'm very happy to um, hear your thoughts. Thank you.